this is really on. How are you all tonight? Um, it's great to have you here. I'm Kit Matthew, the director of IMLS, so welcome. On behalf of the IMLS staff and board, I'm delighted to welcome you to the celebration of the 2019 National Medal for Museum and Library Services. And what a lovely day. I hope you enjoyed the walk over here if you walked. Um, the city is in full bloom. It reminds me, um, I actually started my career in a natural history museum and did quite a bit of field work in very tropical environments, both in the US and Central America. And I remember a time, which is not unlike summer in Washington, where it was incredibly humid. And I was doing field work in a forest and I could barely breathe. You know that oppressive humidity and I was fighting it and I was going, why are there all these plants that's so, I can't even walk, you know? And I suddenly remembered my first biology teacher, um, who by the way, you know, also worked in a museum, said, you know, plants, actually, we have a wonderful relationship with plants. They um, take in the carbon dioxide that we exhale, and we take in the oxygen that they produce, and it's a wonderful uh, symbiotic relationship, in a sense, that we have with plants. And in a way, I think the community work that we come here to celebrate today is also a type of interdependency and symbiosis that enables us to thrive as individuals, as well as um, ecosystems or systems, if you will. And really, you know, as I reflect, uh, as we gather here every year, museums and libraries and their communities really are stewards of our common narratives and diverse collections across America, whether we're in California, Connecticut, Florida, Idaho, Rhode Island, wherever we are. And as we gather here tonight in Washington, we also want to acknowledge the people who have stewarded this, stewarded this land throughout generations. Today we celebrate the accomplishments of 10 outstanding institutions from across America. These 10 metal institutions join more than 200 museums and libraries that have received this honor over the years. The 2019 medalists include public and tribal libraries, an inner university research consortium, a Native American museum, a children's museum, an aquarium, and museums of regional history and civil rights. As different as they may seem at first glance, the recipients of the nation's highest honor for museums and libraries have one thing in common. They are vital community hubs. They offer excellent programs and activities, and they have truly transformed the lives of the people that they serve. At this time, I'd like to take just a few moments to thank a few people. We're honored to have members of the National Museum and Library Services Board with us in the audience. I continue to be incredibly grateful for their guidance. Our board was key in the selection of the medalists, as they are every year, helping us to identify the exemplary institutions we recognize today. I'd like to ask our board members to stand and be recognized. <laughs> I'd also like to welcome our guests from Capitol Hill. Uh, we will be hearing from Senator Jack Reed shortly, but I'd also like to recognize staff from various offices um, that are very supportive of our museum and library's work. Uh, we have um, Elise here from Senator Reed's office, and oh, hi. more as well. Um, staff from Senator L Lamar Alexander's office, somewhere. Uh, Tina Hyde-Smith, Lindsey Graham's office, David, Representative David Price's office, Steve Cohen's office, Representative Charlie Chris's office, Representative Scott Peters, Senator Pat Murray's office and Senator Pat Leahy's office. So again, thanks to all of you for uh, working. And I know it's an incredibly busy time, as it always is this time of year, so thanks for taking time out to join us to celebrate the outstanding work of American libraries and museums. The National Medal reflects the work not only of those individuals receiving 
that's honored today, but rather the achievement of entire communities. And some of those community members are actually here with us, and others will be celebrating back home all across the country. So I'd like to ask the museum and library staff, the winners, board members, community members, and public officials, thank you for your leadership, and if you could stand and be recognized. And finally, I'd like to recognize the IMLS staff, Team IMLS. Every year we look forward to this opportunity to celebrate the excellence of libraries and museums of all sizes and types. It's really a joy to review the applications and see the diversity of work happening across the country. A lot of hard work goes into making this awards program a success, so I'd like to give a round of applause for the staff at IMLS. So now I have the great honor to introduce Senator Jack Reed of Rhode Island. Senator Reed is known for years of work on a bipartisan basis to help make the federal government more efficient, effective, and responsive to the people it serves in Rhode Island and nationwide. A former Army Ranger, Senator Reed serves as ranking member of the Senate Armed Services Committee and is an influential and senior member of the Senate Appropriations and Banking Committees. With much of his career focused on education, Senator Reed has worked for years in support of libraries, museums, and children's literacy initiatives. On the Senate Appropriations Committee, he has successfully led efforts to provide resources to support public libraries, school libraries, and other children's literacy initiatives, as well as museums and the annual appropriations laws. Senator Reed has also authored the last three, I want to say three, reauthorizations of the Museum and Library Services Act, most recently the Services Act of 2018, which provided reauthorization for the agency and was signed into law on the very last day of the year. <laughs> So I'd like to welcome you and ask you to make a few remarks. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Kit, uh, not only for those kind words, but for your work and for your great team at the Institute of Museum and Library Services. You are an extraordinary multiplier in terms of efforts to educate and to provide opportunity to all Americans everywhere, so thank you. IMLS is not among the federal government's largest agencies uh, in terms of staff or funding, but it does reach nearly every community in America. It helps build the capacity of local libraries. It helps museums and aquariums and nature centers all of these to engage and educate and inspire their citizens. IMLS helps ensure that all communities have access to the vital tools for lifelong learning. And tonight I'm so pleased to join you in celebration of some of our country's most exceptional museums and libraries. I extend my congratulations to all 10 medalists. And I want to recognize my colleagues from the House who will come later, their staffs, and the staffs, my colleagues in the Senate, these staff people in particular, they're the ones that do the work. In fact, we have a rule in my office, they do the work, I get the credit. It's a great rule, try it, <laughs> try it someday. But the individual institutions we're honoring this evening are a testament to the sheer belief of all of us here and the power of museums and libraries to bring people and communities together and change lives. You have different missions and different addresses, diverse population and needs, but what you all have in common is the way you strive to touch the lives of individuals, empowering them with skills and knowledge while strengthening and enhancing entire communities. Again, the noblest aspiration, I think, of this country, it is a place for opportunity for all. And that sense of opportunity is captured by libraries, museums throughout this nation, and thank you for that. 
As Kit indicated, I have been working very hard to provide the funding and the authorizations to support museum libraries because I sincerely believe they are critical to our success as a nation and to the success of our fellow Americans. In Rhode Island, it's a remarkable collection of men and women who lead our libraries, do extraordinary work, and make extraordinary contributions. And they are duplicated, fortunately, throughout this entire country. We are celebrating the recent enactment, as Kit indicated, uh, of the Museum and Library Services Act. I was proud to author it. I worked closely alongside my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to make sure it became law. This law continues our tradition of supporting our communities through the museums and libraries, while trying to look ahead and provide flexibility to respond to evolving demands and missions for these vital institutions, and to the IMLS in administrating the museum and library programs. I remember as a little kid climbing up the steps of the Auburn Public Library in Cranston, Rhode Island to get a book. Well, guess what? My 12-year-old daughter is not climbing up the steps to get a book. She's going in there to get a DVD or get on the computer or to do something. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> it's a changing world. And you're helping us stay ahead of those changes and helping promote those changes. We're also, we want to increase funding for IMLS because the mission you do can be done more. It's a great investment. And this is one of those programs which I believe is an investment, not just spending. This is an investment. And we were able last year to push through an increase of $11 million for the agency. In fact, that's over two years, and Kit spent it well. So. We want to build on that momentum because, as I said again, I think every dollar we commit to museums, to, to libraries, is a dollar well spent. It is indeed an investment. But let me, again, congratulate all the, the winners and to thank you for all you do to educate all of our citizens and to make opportunity not just a word, but a reality, an American reality for all of our citizens. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, Senator Reid, and I know you have to run back to work. Um, thank you for being here today and helping us reflect on the important role that libraries and museums play in communities across the country. And now to better acquaint you with our medalists, we've prepared a short video highlighting the fantastic work of our winners this year, so I'd like to ask you to enjoy that. Each year, the Institute of Museum and Library Services recognizes the outstanding contributions of America's libraries and museums. The National Medal for Museum and Library Service, the nation's highest honor of its kind, is awarded to five libraries and five museums that have demonstrated excellence in their programs and services. These institutions open doors to enable lifelong learning. They increase access to information and ideas and they improve the well-being of the communities they serve. This year's National Medal winners are using their partnerships and resources to create new opportunities all across the country. IMLS is proud to honor the contributions of the 10 organizations that embody the power of museums and libraries to positively transform the lives of individuals, families, and communities. As San Diego County's first museum on an Indian reservation dedicated to the perpetuation and presentation of the local Kumeyaay Degeño native culture, the Barona Museum offers a unique educational journey for visitors of all ages. The museum's collection represents thousands of years of history, some objects dating as far back as 10,000 years, and it demonstrates the artistry and skill of the hemisphere's first inhabitants. Located in Gulfport, Florida, the Gulfport Public Library serves a diverse community, providing materials, information, and services in order to support lifelong learning and the sharing of resources. The library has made serving that community a top priority through its LGBTQ Resource Center, the only of its kind in the state. Last year alone, the library hosted 17 LGBTQ-related programs with 1,400 attendees. 
The library's excellent event and program attendance are a testament to the strategic thought that goes into its program. Founded in 1962, the Inter-University Consortium for Political and Social Research, ICPSR, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, is one of the world's oldest and largest social science data archives. ICPSR is housed within the University of Michigan's Institute for Social Research and has almost 800 member institutions worldwide. ICPSR's mission is to advance and expand social and behavioral research, acting as a global leader in data stewardship and providing rich data resources and responsive educational opportunities for present and future generations. With an archive of more than a quarter million files and 10,000 studies in the social and behavioral sciences, ICPSR holds the largest collection of its kind. Everything from surveys and census data to social media data sets, geospatial data, and crime statistics. The rise of the Jamestown Scalalum Library as a linchpin of the Scalalum tribe's social and cultural milieu began humbly. Unlike many libraries whose role is to acquire materials for its collection, staff, tribal families, and other dedicated patrons helped create large parts of the collection. The Jamestown Scalalum Tribal Library specializes in materials by and about American Indians, with a special focus on the people of the Northwest Coast. The library also offers programs to the tribal community to grow self-sufficiency and digital literacy, and to enhance the general public's understanding of Native American issues. From robotics classes to ethnobotany, the library's program offerings aim to bring the tribe's history into the present and the future. Serving the fastest growing city in southern Idaho, Meridian Library District focuses its efforts on enriching lives, igniting curiosity, and cultivating connections. From a shipping container turned tiny library to a bicycle lending program, a bookmobile, and a full-featured makerspace, the library's branches are dynamic community centers that allow Meridian residents to come together around shared goals and interests. The operating budget for the district isn't large, but the collaborative energy of its staff far exceeds its limited resources. Many know Memphis, Tennessee's Lorraine Motel as the location of one of the most tragic events in U.S. history, the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. From the ashes of this tragedy rose the National Civil Rights Museum at the Lorraine Motel, which chronicles key episodes of the American Civil Rights Movement and examines today's global civil and human rights issues, provokes thoughtful debate, and serves as a catalyst for positive social change. Since opening in 1991, millions from around the world have come, including 90,000 students annually. The New Children's Museum is a new model of children's museum whose mission is to stimulate imagination, creativity, and critical thinking in children and families through inventive and engaging experiences with contemporary art. Located downtown, the museum collaborates with contemporary artists to design and create art installations and educational programs for children. The museum brings families together in a rich educational environment that fosters creativity blending the best elements of children's museums, contemporary art museums, and community resources. Steeped in local history, the New Haven Free Public Library in New Haven, Connecticut, became an anchor, along with the train station, in the 1910 plan for New Haven, as envisioned by renowned architects Cass Gilbert and Frederick Law Olmsted, Jr. The Ives Memorial Library, strategically situated on the historic New Haven Green, was dedicated in 1911 and recognized as one of the city's most practical assets, the People's University. From within those venerable walls and at all branch locations, patrons encounter library staff and services that are relentlessly forward-thinking. Opened in 2000, the Orange County Regional History Center occupies the former Orange County Courthouse in the heart of downtown Orlando, 
Operating in that historic space provides the foundation for the History Center's dedication to telling the history of a region that can seem dominated by the itinerant nature of the tourism industry. Community members and visitors who make their way into downtown Orlando encounter an institution devoted to engaging its diverse community in local culture, past and present. The History Center's important role in memorializing the 2016 Pulse nightclub shooting has also helped to instill trust from the community. The South Carolina Aquarium in Charleston, South Carolina seeks to inspire conservation of the natural world by exhibiting and caring for animals and through education and research. Among its thousands of species, almost all are native to South Carolina giving the aquarium a chance to educate the public about the biodiversity of the region and replicate native aquatic ecosystems. In addition, the aquarium extends its educational outreach with a series of partnerships with conservation organizations devoted to taking on tough environmental issues such as coastal erosion due to sea level rise. The Institute of Museum and Library Services congratulates these organizations on their successes in transforming their communities and serving as catalysts for positive change. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, the range of activities and institutions and communities and how they respond and flex to what's happening is, is really impressive. So at this time, we will begin the presentation of the 2019 IMLS National Medals for Museum and Library Service. I'd like to welcome to the stage Saeed Choudhury and Te Mariana Nunn, who are members of our board who will introduce the recipients. Thank you. I'm Saeed Cherdhury. And I'm Tay Mariana Nunn. On behalf of the National Board of Museum and Library Services, we are honored to present these medals to the 10 museums and libraries represented here today. The National Medal of Museum and Library Service honors the strong community connections of museums and libraries. It showcases how these outstanding institutions are able to make a profound difference in the lives of the people they serve. We have invited members of each medalist community to be part of this ceremony to showcase the value and impact of these museums and libraries. Our first medal recipient this evening is the Barona Cultural Center and Museum. Located on the Barona Band of Mission Indians Reservation in San Diego County, the museum is dedicated to the preservation and presentation of the native Kumei de Ganyo language and culture. By sharing artifacts, photographs, and stories, the Barona Museum educates visitors about the history and the living cultures of the indigenous populations of Southern California. Community member Patrick Kuro is a tribal elder and one of less than a handful of remaining fluent speakers of the native language, Ipeya, which means the people's language. He teaches language classes at the museum and chairs the Language Preservation Committee. Patrick has been crucial in the development of the museum's 700-page dictionary, working with a linguist to document this endangered language for future generations. Accepting the award for the Barona Culture Center and Museum are Director and Curator Lori Egan Headley and Community Member Patrick Kuro. Our next me National Medal recipient is the Gulfport Public Library in Florida. One of the library's highest priorities has been serving Gulfport's large LGBTQ community. Unique in the state, the library's popular LGBTQ Resource Center provides a large and diverse offering of programs, drawing in hundreds of attendees and a cohort of highly engaged community members. The LGBTQ Resource Center has become an integral part of the Gulfport community. Libraries have always been a central part of Susan Gore's life. 
Now a retiree, Susan serves as the chair of the Library Circle of Friends Group and on the LGBTQ Resource Center Committee. Susan says, I've been awed to observe firsthand the dedicated commitment of staff to the library's programs and patrons. The Gulfport Public Library gave me a familiar place to connect with others who care deeply about books, literacy, and their community. Accepting the award for the Gulfport Public Library are Librarian Director Dave Mather, Community Member Susan Gore. Our next medal winner is the Inter-University Consortium for Political and Social Research at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. ICPSR is a national leader in the collection, preservation, and curation of large data sets and empowers people to explore its data in responsible and novel ways. Its summer program in quantitative methods brings in a thousand scholars each year for rigorous hands-on training in statistical techniques, research methodologies, and data analysis. John Laverso has served as an ICPSR intern and a data curator for the Center's National Archive of Criminal Justice Data and Resource Center for Minority Data. He credits ICPSR and its many programs for helping him pursue his passion in sociology. John is currently a PhD candidate at the University of Washington, where he specializes in crime, law, deviance, and gender. John's research looks at street gang culture through a sociological and a criminological lens. Accepting the award for ICPSR are Director Margaret Levenstein and Community Member John Laversa. We are now pleased to recognize the Jamestown Sklalem Tribal Library in Squim, Washington. The library is a key element of the Sklalem tribe's social and cultural environment. The Sklalem, or Sklalem, language was almost entirely lost, so the library engaged with partners to recover this important aspect of the tribe's culture. In weekly classes, participants play cards, card, play card games, and take plant walks, bringing the language into everyday life. Celeste Dybeck is a Jamestown Sklalem tribal, lead, tribal elder. Raised in Squim, the traditional territory of her tribe, Celeste has been involved with the Sklalem tribe since 1985, serving on the Higher Education Com Committee and Economic Development Authority Board. Celeste has extensively used and promoted the resources at the Jamestown Sklalem tribal, tribal Library in her work with tribal staff and the local community. Her current project, the Chichmahan Interpretive Trail, is a walking, cycling, and driving trail to Port Townsend that will tell the story of the relationship between early settlers and the Sklalem people in the mid-19th century. Accepting the award for Jamestown Sklalem Tribal Library are Tribal Vice Chair Liz Mueller and community member Celeste Dybeck. <laughs> Our next winner is the Meridian Library District in southern Idaho. The library develops its programming based on community feedback ordering services for youth, seniors, small businesses, and those who want to learn unique skills, such as the art of beekeeping. The library embraces a practical service-oriented philosophy. Through embedded librarianship, the staff provides services to the community within the community, partnering with schools, visiting farmers markets and community events, and providing materials and programs to low-income neighborhoods. In the last three years, Meridian resident Greg Coons has used the resources at its Unbound branch to learn how to 3D print, use a large format color printer, and dabble with augmented and virtual reality. Greg's experience using the technology has even changed his retirement planning. 
helping him to create new small business ventures. Greg says, MLD has created an entirely new entity for the community. I have been so inspired that I not only bring my grandchildren often to let them play in the library, but I have volunteered to share what I have learned. The MLD has altered the arc of my life, and I believe it will change the lives of others and will make, help make my community a better place to live. Accepting the award for the Meridian Library District are Library Director Gretchen Casarati, and on behalf of Greg Kuhn's community member, Becky Carmack. We now recognize the National Civil Rights Museum at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. Located at the site of the assassination of civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the museum documents the history of the American Civil Rights Movement. The National Civil Rights Museum brings visitors to the present day by highlighting pressing civil and human rights issues. With youth engagement as a key priority, the museum partners with civil rights icon Ruby Bridges to lead an annual reading festival where children and educators can receive free books and enjoy a day of storytelling and entertainment. Memphis native and passionate public servant Trivia Chapman is a founding member and the chair of the National Civil Rights Museum's Keepers of 306 which engages civic-minded young leaders who are passionate about preserving the legacy of Dr. King. She works with the museum on programming and events that engage the next generation in the history and future of social activism. Accepting the award for the National Civil Rights Museum at the Lorraine Motel are Museum President Terry Lee Freeman and community member Trivia Chapman. Now we turn to the New Children's Museum in San Diego, California. The museum partners with contemporary artists to develop art installations that children can touch and play on and offers workshops in hands-on art making activities for families. Informed by the science of early childhood development and education research, the museum empowers children to think, play, and create. Rizel Javier is a San Diego artist that has been inspired by and inspirational to the New Children's Museum. Last year, she led art making workshops at the museum as well in, in community centers. Her project, People and Places, set the, team, the theme for mass creativity and comedad workshops as well as for a temporary installation in the museum community's gallery. Rizel speaks of the museum as not just for children, but as in her words, a place that is mindful of children. She says, adults are having fun too, so it's a space of shared happiness. The museum has helped her to see her skills and talents outside of her professional identity as a college professor and to reflect on her goals as a member of the San Diego community. Accepting the award for the New Children's Museum are Judy Forrester, Executive Director and CEO, and community member Rizal Javier. Our next National Medal winner is the New Haven Free Public Library in Connecticut. Steeped in local history, the library has been a community mainstay since its dedication over a hundred years ago. Today, visitors to the history, historic main branch experience a bustling hub of cre for creativity and learning, featuring services and technology for entrepreneurs, creatives, makers, and nonprofit leaders. Born and raised in Puerto Rico, Nilda Aponte moved to New Haven with her family in 2003 after visiting her brother there. 
The library became a space where Nilda and her children could come and participate in community events and interact with local residents. Nilda credits the library for making her and her family feel at home in New Haven. Nilda now serves as a community ambassador in the Fairhaven neighborhood for the library's partnership program with the Long Wharf Theater. Accepting the award for the New Haven Free Public Library are Martha Brogan, city librarian and director, and community member Nilda Aponte. Our next medal recipient is the Orange County Regional History Center in Florida. Housed in a restored 1927 courthouse in downtown Orlando, the museum is devoted to engaging its diverse community and local culture, past and present, while telling the unique history of the region. An annual exhibit memorializing the victims of the tragic Pulse nightclub shooting has gained the center wide recognition for its rapid response collecting techniques. When Dana Crosby Collier first moved to Orlando with her family in 2006, she didn't realize how much of an influence the History Center would have on their lives. Today, she is a regular volunteer, and her two daughters participate in the museum's summer camps and other activities. Her eldest daughter loves the museum so much that she, hopes, she even hopes to become a tour guide there one day. Accepting the award for the Orange County Regional History Center are Executive Director and Museum Manager Michael Perkins, and community member Dana Crosby Collier. Okay, last but certainly not least, we recognize the South Carolina Aquarium in Charleston. The aquarium teaches the public about the region's biodiversity through its native species collection, including sharks, eels, and a 220 pound loggerhead sea turtle named Caretta, or Caretta. Partnerships like the Resilience Initiative for Coastal Education serve to educate communities about key environmental issues. The aquarium has become a key part of South Carolina's science education curriculum, providing resource kits for teachers and traveling around the state visiting schools with a con conservation-driven educational message. Tammy Canada, am I saying that right? Okay. Tammy Canada, a third grade teacher at Mountain View Elementary School, has guided over 2,000 students and chaperones through the aquarium. She's been a dedicated education leadership partner since the aquarium's opening nearly 20 years ago. Tammy says, the South Carolina Aquarium inspires visitors and encourages them to become lifelong learners, to share and multiply what they have learned, and to conserve the natural world. She has seen firsthand the spark and excitement that the aquarium creates. Accepting the award for the South Carolina Aquarium, are Kevin Mills, President and CEO, and community member, Tammy Canada. Congratulations to all 10 of these institutions on receiving the 2019 National Medal for Museum and Library Service. Thank you so much, Tay and Saeed. I appreciate that. And again, one more round of applause. That's truly impressive.
So thank you for joining us today to celebrate the amazing work of these institutions and the communities that they partner with across the country. I'd like to ask you all to join us for a reception just through the doors. And I will ask that the guests from our medal winners um, would stay seated so we can do some group photographs and then you can go out and enjoy the refreshments. So thank you all. I really, again, appreciate your being here.